The Ray Hanania Show is brought to you by the U.S. Arab Radio Network and sponsored by Arab News Newspaper, the Middle East's leading English language publication with print and online editions in Saudi Arabia, Dubai, France, Japan, Pakistan, England, and the United States. Listen to live radio every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern in Detroit, Washington, D.C., New York, and Ontario, Canada. Or watch the live broadcast on facebook.com forward slash Arab News. The Ray Hanania Show is rebroadcast in Chicago at 12 noon on Thursday. For more information on the radio stations, live Facebook broadcast, and podcasts, visit ArabNews.com. And now, here's your host, columnist and U.S. special correspondent for Arab News, Ray Hanania. Good afternoon, everybody in Greater Detroit, Washington, D.C., Upper New York, Ontario, Canada. And uh, Chicagoland, Chicagoland and rebroadcast on Thursday. I'm Ray Hanania. We're live on all these stations, but Chicago, we're going to rebroadcast there. Um, But hopefully we'll be getting live with them also uh, sometime soon. I'm the uh, U.S. Special Correspondent for Arab News Newspaper, the leading English language newspaper in the Middle East region. We're broadcasting live here every Wednesday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on four radio stations, WNZK AM 690 in Greater Detroit, WDMV AM 700 in Washington, D.C., and WTOR AM 770 in Ontario, Canada. And like I said, we'll rebroadcast the show in Chicago on Thursdays at 12 noon on WNWI AM 1080, which covers the huge Chicago land region of more than 8 million people. You can also listen to this show online at ArabRadio.us. And if you want, you can watch the radio show video by visiting Arab News Facebook page at Facebook.com Arab News. This afternoon on radio, we're going to be talking about Ramadan with two guests. And by the way, Ramadan Mubarak to all the Muslim community here in America and across the world and everybody listening. In our first segment, we're going to be speaking with Jamal Osman, a member of the Minneapolis City Council who introduced a law that was adopted that allows for the public broadcast of the Adhan, prayers between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. every day. Later in segment two, we're going to speak with Rowan Redwan a veteran journalist and writer at Arab News about the importance of Ramadan, how it is observed in the Middle East and in Saudi Arabia, where two of the most important Islamic holy sites are located and why it's so important. Although Ramadan is now recognized by many government officials in the United States, including the president, the White House, I think it's an important topic to explore on this first show of the second season of the Ray Hanania show to help non-Muslims here in the United States understand why it is important and what it represents. And by the way, this month in April, we celebrate all the major holidays uh, for all three of the world's largest monotheistic religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. On April 17, there's traditional Christians. Traditional Christians will celebrate Easter And April 24th, Orthodox Christians, mainly the Arab Christians, will celebrate Easter then. We talk about that during next week's show. And Jewish people will be celebrating Passover this month also, April 16th through April 23rd. Right now, I want to welcome my first guest, Jamal Osman, who is a member of the Minneapolis City Council representing the 6th Ward. Osman introduced and sponsored a new law that allows the Adhan to be prayed and broadcast throughout the city between the hours of 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. He was born in Somalia and moved to the United States from Kenya when he was 14 years old. He obtained a degree from Metro State University. His professional experience includes working as a resident advocate in the nonprofit sector and as a certified mental health trainer. Um, He was elected as a Democrat to the Minneapolis City Council in August 2020, serving through January 2024. Welcome to the radio show, Osman. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Ray, for having me today. Uh, Happy Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak uh, to all of us who celebrate uh, the holy month of Ramadan. I'm glad to be joining you today. So thank you so much for having me. 
and you know, as a Christian Arab, uh, most I feel like I'm Christian by religion, but Muslim by culture, mm -hmm. because we our religions really are so close. And many Americans really don't understand Islam. They don't really even recognize the Arab Christians as being Christians. They see us as being different. And it's so ironic. But when I read that you had introduced the law and it was passed by the city council uh, to allow the reading of the Adhan prayer, the recitation of the Adhan prayers, uh, that's amazing to me. And I, th I, I think you're the first city that's ever done that in the United States. 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yes, uh, a major city. And I, I would say that, you know, city of Minneapolis has been a progressive city, a city that um, welcome many uh, Muslim immigrants uh, in, in Minneapolis. We have a large um, East African uh, population here, of course, Arabs too, that live in, in this community. In city of Minneapolis alone, we have close to 200,000 uh, Muslims practicing. We have over 30 mosques or maybe 40 mosques in, uh, in the city of Minneapolis that, um, that, was, that were able to call to prayer inside. Uh, and we also have three council member elected officials in the city of Minneapolis. We have uh, 13 council members plus the mayor um, and three Muslim council members that have been elected. And uh, I was the second Muslim elected official. I, I think it's pretty important that with only three members out of 13 members, three of them being Muslim. Is that correct? Yes. You were able to convince the other non-Muslim members to agree and respect the Islamic religion, the Muslim people in Minneapolis. thats You don't see that in cities across this country. Oftentimes you see conflict. But to see that you needed a majority, correct, of the city council, uh, which, mean, which means that you had to have at least, what, three, seven, let's see, three, four, my math is not is that good? Uh, seven, four, seven. You needed seven members, which means four more non-Muslims to go along with their proposal, and they supported it. That must mean that they, they have great respect for the Muslim community in Minneapolis. Yes, they have great respect, and it, it wasn't really that, that difficult even to convince them. Uh, this was something that the law already allowed us to do. We just had to put a resolution together. How is that? that? Well, um, the audience, uh, amplified noise audience on the books says uh, the certain amount of um, can can be broadcasted uh, from 7 a.m. to uh, 10 p.m. We just had to add it 15 um, amplified. Uh, uh, the decibels. Decibels. Thank you. Right. The decibels. For that. And this it, it's not the first time the call to prayer was also accepted in the city of Minneapolis. Last three years, the mayor had um, exclusive order or like a, 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 he used his power to make the month of Ramadan for one specific mosque in Cedar Riverside neighborhood, which has dominant Muslim community call to prayer. So we hear the call to prayer and, and you know the emotional attachment with the folks that live here, uh, the countries that they grew up um, they were able to hear the Adhan and now hearing the Adhan from their comfort of their house was really moving. Um, the mayor, city council members here, and the state of Minnesota has been um, really kind uh, to the Muslim community. And it says that a lot from our state and, and our city. We have many elected officials in every government level here. We have the county, the state. Uh, the city, uh, the school board, uh, the Congress, Ilhan Omar, most of you know. So it's a progressive, uh, beautiful community that we call it home. So it wasn't really surprising my colleagues to support this. And it wasn't just also the call to prayer. Um, the resolution we passed was uh, to honor the month of Ramadan in the city of Minneapolis, um, how important it is to the community, and um, it was just a beautiful day on March 24th. Now, is the Adhan, uh, this, does this law cover the entire year all the time or just during the month of Ramadan? Entire year. Wow, oh. that's, that's amazing. Yes, because entire I, I've, year. I'm, now, I'm Christian, uh, so I don't you know, pretend to be an expert on Islam or Ramadan. 
Um, but I know that Muslims pray several, many times each day, five times, yeah. five times. But I believe it starts early, though, at 430. So, uh, well, there will be four prayers that will be accepted, um, okay. uh, leaving the Fajr, Salat Fajr uh, behind. Uh, and, you know, the mosques here and the community are happy. But some of the mosques here and the leaders of the mosque, they masjids, they, they realize they want to be respectful to non-believers and they want to be respectful to their neighbors. And some of them actually decided not to call to pray right away, but to have a community engagement, welcome their neighbors, letting them know the policy of the city now allows us to call to prayer uh, from the rooftops of the mosques. And... And I think the experience and the feedback we had for the entire city of Minneapolis has been nothing but positive. And like I say, three years ago, the mayor um, used his power to allow one mosque and it was just a joyful. And I believe that right now having the entire year call to prayer, exceptional, of course, the Saad Fajr will be something beautiful that many community that are uh, Muslims or non-Muslims will be. Will and, be and I, I think you mentioned that there are how many mosques in Minneapolis? Thirty-three. Uh, probably more than that. That's probably, a lot. It's a you lot. More Just mosques. The city of Minneapolis, and you know, of, of course, surrounding areas. Uh, we have close to probably, I would say, the state of Minnesota, close to four hundred thousand Muslims practicing Muslims. Uh, that's just the data for 2020, 2020 I believe. In, in Chicago, we have about four hundred fifty Arabs, and I think <laughs> you know maybe. Uh, including Muslim Arabs and non-Muslim Arabs, maybe we have, I, I would guess, maybe 800,000 for the entire Chicagoland area of northern Illinois. How? What was it that drew so many Muslims to Minneapolis and Minnesota? You're in the middle of the heartland of the United States. It, 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 people don't think of it as an industrial city like Chicago, New York, Detroit, Los Angeles. They kind of think like, you know, there's some cities, big cities, but also a lot of farmland. What what drew Muslims to Minnesota? That is the million question, the million dollar question. I think that uh, a cold, extremely cold state to find um, yeah. hot desert East African <laughs> um, Muslims here. Um, uh, it's it's you know it's a big question, but of course you know um, 1990s. That's where that's when majority of uh, um, East African Muslim communities start coming. It's it was a it was a welcoming state, very um, progressive state, and that um, really welcomed the uh, immigrant community here, and also their jobs that were available in in this uh, brought them here. And right now, I would say the state of Minnesota has been the leading uh, state when it comes to uh, Muslim immigrants. We elected our first Congress, which is Keith Ellison before Ilhan. Correct. And um, we have a major power here and it's welcoming and beautiful community. I lived here 22 years, I have beautiful five, five uh, children that grew up here and I wouldn't trade here for anywhere else. Uh, I know it's a little cold, and but when the spring comes along, you kind of forget about the extreme cold. Yeah. You can get a lot of snow in Minnesota, far more than we get in Chicago. Um, and I and I know that a lot of my friends who are in the Middle East often ask me what snow is. They may see it, you know, a little bit of it. You go to Minnesota, you're going to see a lot of snow, right? Yes. And I would say anybody from the Middle East that has the background of living in desert in that area, if you want to hear the Adhan, you can come come meet us, hear the Adhan at the same time and do, a, the- uh, do a ice fishing and, and snowballing and all that fun stuff during the winter time. But make sure you gear up because it's really cold. <laughs> and you can watch the snowfall while that's happening. Now, what was the response from, was there any, was it, what was the vote on the city council? Did you have everybody or was it divided a little bit? No, it was everybody. And Unanimous. everybody wasn't just voted, actually, they commented and uh, welcomed. And and um, we had many council members that are of a different faith. Um, I had a, a talked to a council member who is who practice uh, Judaism and that is uh, uh, Jewish. And she said, this is really beautiful. And, you know, it's about time that they recognized our different faith is. And, and she, one, one of the things that she mentioned was that, you know, 
we have the Christmas off. We have the Christmas day off. But, you know, uh, Judaism and Islam, we have days like the Eid and Hanukkah and different days that we might not be off work working. And maybe one day we'll get there. And I will add that, you know, the city of um, city of Minneapolis, the school uh, city uh, school board also passed to make the Eid a holiday. So the kids will be home the day uh, after Ramadan falls. So it's a. Uh, it's a beautiful city inclusion and making sure that everybody is treated fair and we are really reflecting everybody's faith and passing policies that are fair to all faiths and it's been nothing but positive and uh, I thank for my colleagues and and the city of Minneapolis. I want to remind all our listeners that they're listening to the Ray Hanania show we're broadcasting through syndication in uh, greater Detroit on WNZK AM 690 in Washington D.C. in WM, WDMV AM 700, uh, parts of Virginia and Maryland, and on WTOR AM 770 radio in Upper New York and Ontario, Canada. This program will be rebroadcast in Chicago on Thursdays at 12 noon at WNWI AM 1080, which covers the Chicagoland region. You can always listen to the show online at airbradio.us. And watch the radio show video by visiting Arab News Facebook page at facebook.com Arab News. We're hosted by U.S. Arab Radio uh, Network uh, and Layla El Husseini, a uh, really a, uh, a pioneer in Arab American and Muslim journalism in the United States. And we're sponsored by Arab News, again, the leading English language newspaper in the Middle East. I'm on the line with Jamal Os- Osman a member of the Minneapolis City Council representing the 6th Ward, and he introduced a new law that allows the uh, Adhan to be prayed and broadcast through the city of Minneapolis between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. every day, all year long, Um, and uh, it was just passed, correct? Uh, And kind of, uh, you know, important because it coincides with uh, Ramadan uh, taking place now. Yes, my office has worked uh, last nine months trying to figure it out, really working with the city attorney and the staff to make sure that, you know, we are aligning with all all laws that have existed and making sure that this is something that will will get supported. So we spent nine months really working on and we waited this time because we, we just wanted to make sure that we line up uh, with Ramadan and the holy months are coming along and um it's, it's just wonderful that uh, community really welcome. We had um, uh, many people that have contacts us out of the state or even surrounding cities. And like we have a twin city, St. Paul, that doesn't have that law. And right now, a big city like Minneapolis, we're able to um, have this law passed. And I'm sure cities that are our neighbors and, and also outside cities and bigger cities in, 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 in the United States will be able to follow this. And we hear the Christian bell, you know, the church from the bell. And we hear that during our lunchtime, different times, you know. And then uh, the Adan, I think, also lasts about three minutes long. And if we have the windows of uh, uh, those four prayers and, yeah, and not, having, not having 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Uh, go off, it's something that community have welcome. And uh, it's it's being positive and i'm really glad to be part of this especially in the holy month of ramadan now i know in the middle east sometimes i remember uh, my first very first visit to uh, bethlehem uh, where my mother's family's from my father's family's from jerusalem i was in the hotel i just got there had to be in the 1980s i think um and uh, i was awakened at 4 30 in the morning by the call to prayer and i go wow you know, I never heard that before. It's first time for me going back to the Middle East. Um, and But for three minutes, isn't that long? You know, to allow that, I think, is very progressive, you know, for your state. And I'm, I'm assuming that uh, the decibel level isn't that high that it's annoying. It's just enough, right, for people around the mosque can hit. Yeah, hear it. Uh, Yes, I think the purpose is not just to broadcast it for the entire city to hear. The purpose is to broadcast it like in the area that's close to it. People that are standing at the parking lot trying to come into the building or 
or, or, or across the street from the mosque. So they know um, it's time to, to pray. And we're, we have created these policies to make sure that we are being equal to the communities and not really trying to offend anyone or um, make sure that we're not disturbing anyone. Like I say, uh, it's been positive. This happened three, it's been happening three three years for the month of Ramadan for one mosque and now making it entire city has been uh, positive. And like the mosque wanna be respectful, the Muslim community wanna be respectful to their non-Muslim community in the area. And uh, they do wanna be, um, uh, you know, uh, respectful and have that uh, conversation with them. Some of them have decided to wait until um, they have that conversation with their neighbors. So um, we live in a, in a, in a beautiful country, uh, country with laws and we're not breaking the laws, but just following the laws and making the laws that reflect the entire community. When uh, have have people you said people were reaching out to you from other cities, yes. correct to find out how you did it because uh, you know in politics we call it a cookie cutter law that other people are going to emulate and follow. Um, what have what have they been asking and what have you been telling them? You know to to do the same thing if they wanted to do that in their cities. Well, they have been asking, of course, um, how do, is. How do you make it possible? And what is the reaction? And I would say, just look into the state law. Maybe it's already allowed to broadcast uh, amplified noise. And now when I say amplified noise, I mean, we have the bars and the clubs, you know, they do play loud right. uh, music and they follow the law. So it might not be as high as that and just making it entire community instead of specifically religious. Uh, we try to focus, make it, this is entire anybody who wants broadcasts for whatever during this time can do that. It's not just the mosque that allowed. If you want to, uh, you know, follow the state law and the city law for amplified noise. And um, right now you're not required to, to have a permit. We made it that. And I was telling them that, that is as, as, as easy as it was. And we have worked and make sure that we checked every box that, and we have and been telling them it's doable. It's doable. A freely community is welcoming this. It's it's a beautiful thing. And I would say, I want to go back. People say, why do you want to do this? You know, people right now, it's the 21st century. People have alarm clocks, whatever, you know what time it is. It's not because people doesn't know what time to pray. It's just uh, the feeling of inclusion. And really, for me, my experience, I grew up in Somalia where we hear the call to prayer every everywhere we go and right now if i visit in middle east or any country that is practicing muslim we hear that and it's it's a beautiful thing um and for my kids first time to hear uh the mosque uh close to the mosque when we are close to the mosque to hear the adhan is a life experience for them it's a life-changing experience it's something they enjoy something they never experienced before that and that's what it's all about it's all about that inclusion and really making it home home and, and that's an important point you bring up. There is a law in Chicago that says you can play music up to a certain decibel level. Sure. You know, and that decibel level, the law says if you're above it, you could be fine. But as long as you're below that decibel level, you can play whatever you want. Um, and you could have a party in your backyard. You could have a band playing out of your garage. Um, and I think that it was ingenious. How did you come up with the idea to do it? Because when I think about it, this could have been done years ago under yeah. the existing laws, even in Chicago. Yeah, I wonder, you know, no one ever looked into it. But for me, it was really serving what my community need is. And, and I realized having the C um, mayor um, uh, approving a call to prayer and how people accept and how excited it was. I look into uh, that laws and I work with closely with the city attorney and staff. And um, thanks to my colleagues and my uh, my office, uh, we have uh, come up and decided to move this resolution forward. And it's been it's been nothing but beautiful. And I would say Chicago or any other city, just look into your laws, work with with the city and your colleagues and. You know, work what's uh, best for your community. And for me, 
it was it was coming either me or next council member but it was something that happened to me and and i'm glad i'm part of it yeah i this is a phenomenal story when i heard it i said i got to get a hold of this guy <laughs> because not only did he come up with a very interesting law but he, it was ingenious nobody else had ever thought of it and like i said um the churches ring their bells you know it's a symbol what you know some people find the bells annoying but it's part of the christian religion you know we respect their everybody's religion and i think what you're doing in minneapolis is a a great uh example of why this country is so lucky to have the rich diversity that we have and when we get along together it makes it even greater i mean uh it's just phenomenal well said, right? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Uh, it's a it's a it's a country that allow us to practice our faith. Um, you know, um, people are happy here to live and raise their family, and um, it's been nothing but joy to be part of this process and live uh, called City of Minneapolis home. So, my community appreciates, uh, and I think uh, I'm I'm hoping and wishing that entire country um, looks into the example of Minneapolis. And I know that, uh, listen, I, I, I was born and raised here in the United States. I know that there's discrimination out there. A lot of discrimination comes from not understanding who I am. It's not that they really hate me. They fear the unknown. That's what Americans are about. Once they know you, 99% of them find that they can love you, support you, um, there's room for everybody. There's always that 1%, though, that no matter what you do, they're going to be mad. Has that 1% popped up in Minneapolis? I mean, has there been any repercussions at all? Uh, for for the matter of the resolution? Yes. Uh, we haven't really hear that at all. But, of course, that 1%, uh, it's always there. Uh, growing up, um, coming in this country before September 11 and being... Uh, in school, September 11, and you know, of course, getting bullied uh, by uh, by kids by calling uh, you uh, different names and so on. We all experience that, and I think, like you say, you say it beautiful. It's ignorance, it's fear. Uh, once people get to know you and um, see you as uh, anyone else, uh, it's that acceptance is there. And the United States came from a long way. I think, yeah. You know, maybe last four years, Donald Trump kind of bit us behind. Let me get into politics a little bit. Listen, all the politicians are the same in America. <laughs> but, I, I know but, they single him out, but <laughs> everybody gives us a hard time no matter but, what. But believe that one percent is always there, and those that benefit from the fear and division within within society, it's always a threat to the greater uh, humanity. But um, I kind of look over that and just move forward and trying to, you know, bring positive to the to the community, wherever I am. Uh, my guest on the line is Jamal Osman, a member of the Minneapolis City Council representing the 6th Ward. Osman introduced and sponsored a new law that allows the Adhan to be prayed and broadcast throughout the city between the hours of 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And he was ingenious in looking at the law. And technically, the law allows this as long as it doesn't exceed a certain decibel level. It allows any type of sound, music, sound, and why not prayer? Um, Osman is from Somalia. He moved to the U.S. from Kenya when he was 14 years old. Um, and he's just phenomenal uh, activism. I'm looking forward to all the great things you're going to be doing, Jamal, in the future. Elected as a Democrat to the Minneapolis City Council in August 2020, and you're going to be serving through January 2024. Make sure you also say hello. There's another uh, congresswoman up there, Betty McCollum. She's phenomenal. Oh yeah, We hear from her all the time, too. And uh, here's someone who's not Muslim, who's not Arab, and does so much for the Muslim and Arab community. And sometimes you, say, you wonder that somebody who's not part of our community does such great things. It's good to see that. Yes, right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think Betty McCollum is, is great. Um, she is a colleague and a friend and i will you know we she comes a lot comes to our um shops and drink that somali tea and it's just amazing to kind of see her and i will say the entire city uh state of minnesota all the elected officials um have been part of our community and 
you know, we have a lot to say. We vote and we are part of society and and Betty has been great. So um all right. Yeah. Jamal, listen, thank you for joining us. His Jamal Osman's website is www.jamal J A M A L Osman O S M A N dot org O R G. And you can follow him on Twitter at Jamal Osman M N from Minnesota. Jamal, listen, thank you again so much for joining me this morning. It was a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much, Ray, and uh happy Ramadan to all of you. Uh thank you so much for having me. Ramadan Kareem, buddy. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break here at the Ray Hanania show. And uh, I have a, another super guest who's going to join us. Um, she's just phenomenal. I've, I've spoke, we've spoken to her before on the radio show. Rowan Redwan, an Arab news reporter and regional correspondent in the Gulf, who's going to discuss the importance of Ramadan, the celebrations taking place in Saudi Arabia and the Muslim world. So we'll dive a little bit deeper into uh, Ramadan and how important it is to Muslims. I'm Ray Hanania, and uh, you're listening to the Ray Hanania Show on uh, either on WNZK AM 690 in Greater Detroit, WDMV AM 700 in Washington, D.C., WTOR AM 770 Radio in Ontario, Canada, and this will be rebroadcast in Chicago at 12 noon on WNWI AM 1080. This is the U.S. Arab Radio Network, and we're sponsored by a great newspaper, the leading English language newspaper of the Middle East, Arab News, where I am the U.S. Special Correspondent. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will be joined by Rowan Redwan talking about Ramadan. I'm Ray Hanania. We will be right back right after these messages. ArabNews.com, bringing you breaking news from across the Middle East and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the latest headlines with expert analysis and insights at ArabNews.com. Join over 5 million Facebook fans and over 10 million monthly readers. ArabNews.com, news that matters to you. بعد تطعيم أكثر من ثلاثة بلايين شخص حول العالم بشكل كامل بلقاح كوفيد 19 تمت الآن الموافقة على تلقيح الأطفال من عمر 5 إلى 11 سنة فقد أثبتت الدراسات بعد تجارب سريرية مع أطفال حول العالم أن جرعتي اللقاح المخصصة لهم آمنة وفعالة يوصي الأطباء بتلقيح الأطفال من سن الخامسة فما فوق من أجل حماية الأصحاء منهم أو ذوي الظروف الصحية الصعبة الطفل جزء من المجتمع وهو معرض لأن يصاب بالفيروس ويمكن أن يحمله لعائلته ولمن حوله احمي طفلك وعائلتك ومجتمعك لقح طفلك ليكون بأمان في المدرسة أو مع العائلة والأصدقاء وأثناء ممارسة الرياضة تحدث لطبيبك واكتشف الحقائق بنفسك أو زر موقع michigan.gov slash kids covid vaccine رسالة من وزارة الصحة والخدمات الإنسانية في ميشيغان At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. The Ray Hanania Show is brought to you by the U.S. Arab Radio Network and sponsored by Arab News Newspaper, the Middle East's leading English language publication with print and online editions in Saudi Arabia, Dubai, France, Japan, Pakistan, England, and the United States. Listen to live radio every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern in Detroit, Washington, D.C., New York, and Ontario, Canada. Or watch the live broadcast on facebook.com forward slash 
Arab news. The Ray Hanania Show is rebroadcast in Chicago at 12 noon on Thursday. For more information on the radio stations, live Facebook broadcast, and podcasts, visit ArabNews.com. And now, here's your host, columnist and U.S. Special Correspondent for Arab News, Ray Hanania. And it's really very exciting to be back on radio here on uh, Wednesday, April 6, 2022. Uh, this is our second season of the Ray Hanania Show. And of course, I love Arab News. I've been writing. I wrote for them many, many years ago for almost eight years. And then uh, I was brought back uh, uh, about almost, I think, four, maybe five years ago now uh, by a great uh, editor in chief, Faisal uh, Abbas there. And uh, uh, Faisal is just phenomenal, the staff at the Arab News, and I'm really excited to have uh, a guest from Arab News helping us understand, because I know there are a lot of Americans out there who are non-Muslim, and uh, even some Muslims maybe who want to hear about their own religion, but to understand what Islam is all about, how it's celebrated uh, in the Middle East, and to help us understand that, I invited Rowan Redwan an Arab news reporter and regional correspondent in the Gulf who will discuss Ramadan with us and and its importance. She's been associated with the newspaper in various capacities since 2012 and is currently Arab news deputy section editor and regional correspondent. She's written extensively on various topics in Saudi Arabia, the region and beyond. They include interviews with the longest reigning UFC lightweight champion, Khabib, Numagomedov. <laughs> I apologize. My the Japanese is terrible. T20 Jap- Japan chair and ADBI dean. Uh, Noyuki Yoshino, former U.S. Army General David Petraeus, and others. She's also moderated a number of events in the kingdom. She has a BA in English literature and a master's degree in public health. Rowan, thank you so much for joining us. It's so great to have you back on the radio with me again and to see you thank you ray for having me it's been a while. now and ramadan mubarak now i always assume that uh you know the proper way to greet a muslim during ramadan is say ramadan mubarak or ramadan kareem there are different ways of saying it but it's all the same in the end you know you're celebrating a month and you're just saying Happy Ramadan or Ramadan Mubarak. So there are different ways of saying it. Ramadan Kareem is the suit, the most suited uh, way to say Ramadan. Ramadan like Kareem. Happy Ramadan. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna start using that one from now on because now Ramadan uh, runs 30 days. It's uh, uh, as I understand it, it's ninth month of the Muslim calendar, uh, and it's a holy month of fasting and it ends and begins and ends with the appearance of the crescent moon. Why is Ramadan so important uh, to Muslims? It's the holiest month of the year. It's basically the month where the the, the, uh, Archangel Gabriel came down from the the heavens. And the the first verse of the Quran was, you know, given to the prophet uh, in Ramadan. And uh, there's a lot of spirituality um, um, that is associated so it's not just fasting or abstaining from food and drink and no water is we don't drink water when fasting either so it's it's just it's 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 let's say it's a package deal right so you're it's a spiritual month where you get to know each you know yourself better you get to uh, connect with the almighty you get to connect with your friends and family and you get to connect with your own self um and of course it's just not um, and of course, it's also reading the Quran and reading the prophets, um, what, what we call the Sunnah, or what the prophet saying is. And we understand a little bit more about our religion. And there's a lot of tranquility. There's a lot of quiet. There's a lot of peace during this month. It's it's just a it, it's very different from other months for some for some reason. So you're fasting, and there's just a very interesting and a very nice sense of calm about you your day can go can be extremely crazy and hectic but there's just a very nice sense of calm 
And yeah. it, it's it's about learning. It's more, it's more it's learning to be patient. It's abstaining from anger, from jealousy, from negative thoughts. Um, so yeah. So I know Ramadan has been accepted in the United States for probably more than the past decade, uh, maybe even longer. Uh, maybe going back to uh, Bill Clinton and even before, I think, even with uh, before that, yeah. President W. H. H. W. Bush, George H. W. I think Bush. It's, it's even before that. It's way, way before that. I can't remember which president exactly, but it was uh, who's after Nixon? I forgot. Yeah, that would be uh, uh, Gerald Ford. It might have been Gerald mm, Ford. And then might have been. Yeah. And then Ronald yeah, Reagan might have been Ford. Yeah. And then or uh, uh, Jimmy Carter, I think, right after then, that my history that I go back a long way, but there are too many presidents to remember. But a lot of Americans, I think, in the last 20 years have really come to embrace Ramadan as an important religious event and holiday uh, for Muslims. They've learned a lot about it. I still don't believe they all really understand the depth of how important it is. Can you walk us through? I mean, uh, we talk about it being a month long. Um, from the first sighting of the crescent moon to the last sighting of the crescent moon. Um, mm -hmm. Is every day the same day uh, in terms of the way you live and what you do? To, give yeah. us what is a day like during Ramadan? It's a, it, well, okay. Um, you first, of, co of course, uh, you start off with the morning play prayers, the early morning prayers, the fajr prayers. So there are two. And then after that, you either take a nap and then start your day, whether you go to work or if you're a high housewife, you stay at home. The kids, of course, go to school. Uh, you fast. And when I say fast, you you fast from everything, food, drink, smoking, um, everything. Um morning prayers and then there's the early evening prayers and then evening prayers which is at sundown and then of course the late evening prayers which is Aisha and then there's a series of uh, prayers that are called Tarawih uh, um, that can go from 2 to 21 um, rakahs when I say rakah it's mean like when you bow down um, the day is a very calm day you go to work you're you know, doing your thing. It's it's just business as usual. Um, in the Middle East, a lot of countries are um, actually um, decrease the, the amount of time you spend at the workplace. So instead of an eight day, eight hour work day, you have a six hour work day. And this is not just in Saudi Arabia. I think this is in many, many Arab countries uh, who observe uh, the, the holy month. Um, I think a lot of people during their break times or, you know, just take some time to read the Quran, uh, read a book of prayers um, or just literally sit down and meditate. And uh, when I say meditate, I don't mean, you know, the yoga meditation. I mean, just reflecting and, you know, just sitting by themselves and, you know, finding that sort of calm and Zen and, you know, maybe praying a little prayer, saying a little prayer uh, with they have their prayer beads or not. Um like I said earlier, it's a very calm, normal day. And come sundown, that's when the celebration starts. So um, Ramadan is not just a month of fasting. It's a month of connecting with family and friends. And there's a lot of food involved. We're Arabs. We know. We it's love basically food. Chris <laughs> it's basically I love Christmas. <laughs> I love to cook. My wife looks at me and says, why are you always trying to do the cooking? The kitchen is for me. And I say, no, you know what? I love to cook. So you're right. We well, Arabs and Muslims and Christian Arabs, we do love our food. So true. there's a certain time in the evening then, right, where you can break the fast. Is that referred to as the iftar when you sit down and yeah. eat or and is yeah, that every yeah. day? Yes, it is every single day. Of course, the timing differs according to when the sun sets. Um, and uh, as my call, your, your earlier guest uh, mentioned, uh, you hear the call of prayer, the Adan. And here in Saudi Arabia, you hear it everywhere. Um, and you watch it, of course, on TV in Mecca or Medina. But you hear it everywhere. And you break your fast with something as simple as a date. And the, the sunnah, or the way the prophet did it, was three dates and some water. So uh, traditionally, here in Saudi, we have um, Arabic coffee, three dates, or different or whatever amount of dates that you want, of course. And uh, there's extra condiments on the side. So you have cream and you have tahini on the side. So it's just an extra thing. Of course, different drinks, uh, water is essential. And then you do, and then you perform the prayers. And after you perform the prayers, then the real feast 
begin. So, so you got why, a table full. Yeah. I was going to say that's why dates are considered so important because whenever I hear Ramadan, I hear about uh, dates, and there are a number of big uh, medjool, medjool dates, I believe they're referred medjool. to. Uh, what you guys know is Mishdul. Uh, we have different types of dates here. Um, yeah, we're limited in the United States. Of, yeah, we're yeah. limited. <laughs> believe me, we do we're, not get the yeah. breadth of the uh, diversity in what you have. Believe me, I love the Arab world, and I'd love to see more of that here. But dates are sim- are s- symbolic a little bit, aren't very they? Very much symbolic. Yes, yes, very much symbolic. They have some health benefits as well. So while you're fasting, your sugar level, of course, decreases. Uh, and throughout, and the, the more you fast, the more your body tries to adjust, but it cannot adjust without any sustenance. So the dates provide sustenance from the get-go. So they're, I mean, it's believed to be three. So the saying is, or the phenomenon is, it's a, the saying is, first will increase your sugar level the second will regulate it or or the third will regulate it something like that i'm not sure i'm not a doctor i can't there are no studies about that but i believe that the sunnah is three so we follow the prophet um so the three dates. Way and we have three three, three dates, dates yeah. when you break the fast yeah. i'm now i love dates i eat them all the time now i notice that uh, many of my christian relatives in the middle east are very respectful of ramadan and they fast also, even though it isn't required of them. The restaurants, they, they open them late. Um, you know, they don't open them during the day. They don't eat in public. You know, you don't want to be eating in front of somebody who's fasting. So there's a lot of respect, I think, uh, from the Christian religion uh, to Muslims. Now, Saudi Arabia is so important in all of this, isn't it? You have two of the most important holy sites. And what is the connection between Ramadan and those two holy sites for Muslims around the world? Um, well, first, well, I think it's mo- it's important throughout the whole year. It's not just Ramadan. Uh, but let's start off with, um, as I mentioned earlier, the Archangel A- Gabriel came down from the heavens and the first verses of the Quran were, were given to the prophet. So that, and while he was in Mecca, in one of the mountains in Ghar Hira, in a cave called Hira, uh, and that's a that's it's not considered as a holy site, but a lot of Muslims like and pilgrims like to go and see where this whole thing, where it happened. Um, and of course, it's a protected area, and there are designated tour groups and tour guides that will take you. And then, so the holy the Mecca, the holy city of Mecca, how, holds the the Grand Mosque where the Kaaba is, the cubic uh, looking structure with the black um, uh, curtains. Uh, and that's also that was actually built by the prophet Abraham. Abraham. And um, nearby, there are two hilltops called Safa and Marwa. And between that, there was also a well called Zamzam well, where when the prophet Abraham left uh, to look for food and water, his wife Hajar and his wife Ismail, or Ishmael, uh, were left behind. And while he was, you know, the mother uh, Hajar was going back and forth between these two hills seven times and the child was crying. And while he was kicking on the ground, it's believed that the water started like, you know, a spring and a sprout. The water was sprouting from the ground. So that's an also holy site. Um, so you can imagine just how small the area is and how everything comes about. So that's the Safa and Marwa where pilgrims go back and forth seven times. The cube, uh, which is the Kaaba. Pilgrims go around that also counterclockwise seven times as well to perform something called the Umrah. Um, one of the things that are interesting during the month of Ramadan is if you do perform Umrah, um, the saying is that it's as if you perform the Umrah with the Prophet or Hajj with the Prophet. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but they believe that. And there's a lot of um, um, cleansing during that month, there's a lot of cleansing and lots, a lot of like a positive energy, just performing Umrah, fasting or or witnessing and performing the Taraweeh, the evening prayers. Something about that whole scene, Ray, I've, I've, tried, I've been there a couple of times before and I've prayed during the month of Ramadan over there, over there as well and I've performed Umrah there as well. The unity. I think I believe it's the unity. It's how everyone is all united and they all break their fast at the same time. They're all breaking fast with the with the dates and the water or the yogurt drink. 
it's it's just everyone's in unison. It's it's a beautiful feeling. Um, I don't think you'll ever find it anywhere else in the world. And same goes for the for the city of Medina, where the Prophet's mosque is. Uh, a lot of pilgrims uh, go visit the Prophet's uh, grave there, and they just go and say a little prayer, um, and they pray in an area called the Rauda. Uh, the Rauda is what is believe what was believed to be the Prophet's house, where he actually built his house. And that area, it's a very small square area. Um, they believe that, we believe that any prayer that we pray in that area will go straight to the Almighty and will be heard. Uh, of course, it's not just that area. Of course, the holy month of Ramadan, the heavens are open and um, any prayer you pray throughout the day is heard by the Almighty. And that's the beauty of it. And it's just something extra special. It does sound beautiful, and I can see how it would strengthen people to find that people during a, this whole month um, would find strength in this to be better people, uh, to be better individuals. Um, you had mentioned that you had uh, visited there many times, so men and women also go there to pray, correct? Of course, of course, all year long, and uh, it's extra special during the month of Ramadan, and uh, you now that COVID is almost over, at least I hope it is. Um, Saudi Arabia has lifted uh, restrictions from right. for entering the kingdom, and there, are, your pilgrims are no longer, or travelers basically, are no longer required to uh, to show any kind of COVID vaccine certificate. Has or has it returned to uh, the levels of pre uh, coronavirus? Um, or, we're not. It... I'm not sure. We're getting there because okay. we are at full capacity. The The presidency of the two holy mosques have uh, expanded or increased the term in, in terms of the capacity. No, There are no longer social distancing. Um, the only thing that's required is to keep the mask on inside the mosque, you know, for, for caution and, you know, for protection. Uh, but everything is semi back to normal. I mean, if you open the t any TV channel right now that and or you Google or YouTube uh, the you know Grand Mosque in Mecca, you will see almost at full capacity. Wow. And and I I have many friends that have gone there during Ramadan and they've come back with the title Hajj. And ah, is that any time is that any time during the year or is it because they go during Ramadan because it's a special time of the year to do that. In other words, can they I don't understand the title. I, I think I do from you just have given a brilliant explanation um, of right, uh, so. Islam and the importance of Ramadan and the uh, the two the two holy sites in Saudi Arabia. Um, but do they get that? Can they get that title anytime during the year by visiting the mosque, these holy sites or just during well, Ramadan? I mean, it's a, it's a it's a term that we say to just about everyone who visits the mosques and perform Umrah or perform Hajj. Okay. Um, I mean, you, it's just, it, it's not a joke, but it is right. kind of like, a, it, I mean, it's a nice, it's a term. of So it's just right? basically or, somebody, yeah. it's a signif, it's a designation that somebody has been there and exactly. back. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah, where, yeah. And, to wherever and, they're at. And I'm sure most of your male friends returned with their heads shaven. So, I mean, yes. that's a, also part of the ritual in order to, complete your umrah at the at my in mecca you have to shave your head or cut off some areas in your hair just to uh break away from wearing the white uh cloth um for men they wear the two pieces of white cloth um again that 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 color is a significant color in islam um it's a sign of it's a color of peace and everyone all male uh, pilgrims wear it because, as a sign of unity. So it doesn't matter what um, what really, what uh, nationality you are. You know, you're you're here at the house of God performing a ritual that's required of you at least once in your life for those who are able to, of course. Um, and it's just a it's an interesting term, Haji. Uh, it, it, it's I just not hear it so often. With... They're so proud, believe yeah. me, and I respect it. They come back and they want to be called Hajj uh, Nimer or Hajj, yeah. or, or Hajj, yeah. Ma Hajj Mahmoud. <laughs> yeah. um, I have so yeah. many friends. I know they're very proud. And I think I understand it more. It's like a verification that they that they did this. Is is it a requirement of every Muslim to do this? Uh, a requirement for those who are able to. Okay. Um, of course, there are exceptions to the rule, though there are those 
who are, for example, aren't financially able to or are too ill. Um, it's a requirement. And if you can't do it, you can actually have someone else do it for you. So let's say your son or your daughter or your cousin, you can basically tell them, please, you can ask them to. And you do have an excuse. So it's not strictly, it, it is very important to perform both Hajj and Umrah once in your lifetime. But if you can't, then you're excused and someone else can take that responsibility for you. I think uh, Islam is a very tolerant re religion and it's beautiful. <laughs> and I, I think uh, that uh, I know we could go on forever talking about this because there's so much detail that I would love for Americans uh, to hear and understand. Um, you know, when they see people like you, they need to see us. Um, and when they see you, Arab women playing leading roles the way you do, um, it breaks these sad, tragic stereotypes that we often turn to when we don't understand things. Um, so, Rowan, I, I just want to say what a pleasure it is to have had you on this program this uh, afternoon here. I know it's early in the morning by you. It's very kind of you to take time, you know, out of your uh, uh, late evening to join us and talk about such an important topic. Any final thoughts before I let you go and say thank you? Anything I didn't ask about? Um, well, I just wanted to thank you for having me again in the show. I mean, it's been a while since I've been back. And, you know, um, even for those who are non-Muslims, you know, if you know a Muslim friend or you know someone who is Muslim, why not practice? Why not, you know? You know, join in with the fasting. So if not fasting or abstaining from food and water, how about you try to you know, adjust your behavior or learn a little bit about the holy month and why is it so holy? I mean, you know, you can you can get, you know, good practices are adopted. Uh, you know, you can relinquish bad habits. Um, it's very much like meditation. Just sit and reflect. You know, that's, that's all it is. Um, that's what we love doing. This month is is a very hectic month. It's very difficult because we are fasting and we're not drinking water or eating, but there's just a sense of calm. And we'd love for everyone to just at least try it, whether you are Christian, Jewish, Muslim or not, you know, just why not? All right. Rowan, Redwan, uh, editor and uh, uh, a great writer, um, regional correspondent, uh, Arab news reporter in the Gulf, um, who's joined us this uh, this uh, afternoon here in uh, Chicago, Detroit, Washington, D.C., Ontario, and uh, in rebroadcast uh, on Chicago radio. Rowan, thank you again so much for taking the time to join us. Just such a pleasure always to speak with you. And I look forward to seeing you and Faisal and everybody uh, at the Arab News offices when I visit there, hopefully later this year. Thank you so much, Rowan. We appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody for listening to our first uh, broadcast of the second season of the Ray Hanania show uh, brought to you by the U.S. Arab Radio Network and sponsored by Arab News uh, newspaper, ArabNews.com. We've been broadcasting on four, three live radio stations and one in rebroadcast tomorrow um, and also online at ArabRadio.us. And uh, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arab News. Um, so if you missed any part of this, you can go to facebook.com slash Arab News and watch the entire program. I want to thank Jamal Osman uh, and Rowan Redwan for joining me. I'm Ray Hanania, and uh, I hope you'll join us again next week when we talk about the importance of Easter uh, to the uh, Christian Arab community. Have a great uh, week, everybody, and Ramadan Kareem. Bye-bye.